What's going on, everybody? This is John Bain, and I want to welcome you to another episode of Scrap Mechanic, The Basics. Today, we'll go over bearings, controllers, and the connection tool. The bearing. The bearing allows for rotational movement. It will only do this on one plane, meaning it'll do it on the X, Y, or Z, pending on block placement. When not attached to anything, it can rotate in either direction, either clockwise or counterclockwise. Physics play a role on this and how fast it will move and react with its environment. As you can see here, blocks are put on top of the bearing that has already been placed. It will not move to either side because the weight is evenly displaced. Adding a block to one side will make it swing. When placing your rotating piece, while the object is on a lift, the bearing will not rotate. It will stay in whatever the starting position was when it was built. Removing the lift will release the lock bearing and allow the piece to rotate. Having the mechanics of a lock bearing while on a lift is extremely valuable when doing a multi-bearing build. One of the parts you will frequently use with a bearing will be a wheel. The bearing is critical to allow rotation and movement with the wheel. Almost all blocks and items can be placed on a bearing except for suspension. As you can see, you cannot place it on a bearing. This is overcome by placing a block and then your suspension. The tool we will look at in this lesson is the connection tool. It is used to connect interactive parts together with your build. Here we have the driver's seat and a bearing with blocks attached to the bearing. We will now attach the driver's seat to the bearing. With the tool equipped, left clicking on one interactive spot and holding left click, dragging towards the other piece will allow you to connect them both. If connected to a bearing, you will see two rotating arrows. Depending on which side of the block you place your bearing will determine which way it will rotate with the steering wheel. Now we will connect the bearing to an engine. You will see all connections made with the engine will be orange. This will help you organize all your connections while doing a build. Just like with the steering wheel, you will see two arrows pointing in a rotating direction. This is also dependent on which side of the block you attach the bearing to. Placing your mouse over the bearing and using your right click, you can change the direction in which it's rotating. Now we will move on to the controller. Once the controller is placed, you can use your connection tool to show its interactive spot. Controller's interactive spots are purple. Using the same technique as before, hold left click and drag to the bearings or from the bearings to the controller. You'll see this time the arrows point in two separate directions. One is red, one is blue. When referencing from the base block the bearing is placed on, red signifies counterclockwise, blue signifies clockwise. As you can see with this bearing, it has been placed on the other side of the block. The rotation of the bearing will still follow the rule as if you are facing that bearing with the block behind it. This is a very critical thing to remember with large builds. When going back to program your controller, you can often forget which side the bearing was attached to. Just like we did with the engine bearing, you can right click each to change the direction of the arrows. This is useful in organizing your bearings when facing from one direction with your controller. This is your controller when you have no bearings attached. You can see that the repeat toggle is available. Also, you can see the slider for the speed at which the bearing will spin. This is the controller interface when there are bearings attached. There are several important things to note when looking at this interface. Bearings are organized by number to the left of the interface. The numbers are based on the order in which the bearings were connected to the controller. To the right of the bearing number, there is a row filled with 11 circles. The first circle depicts where the initial rotation begins. This can be used in builds to create angles besides 90 degrees. The next 10 circles are used to program the rotations in sequence. After the first rotation is complete, it moves to the second step of the sequence, and so on. All bearings will rotate at the same time at the same step of the sequence. To change the rotation of a bearing, left-click the center of the circle and drag it left or right. This will change the degrees of movement by 15. Holding shift and dragging will move each degree by 1. Dragging left will cause it to rotate in a counterclockwise manner, and this is shown by red. Dragging right will do the opposite. Remember, the movement is based off as if you were facing the bearing and the base block was behind it. Here is an example of programming done and activated it with a maintain switch. Since the repeat is not toggled, when all rotations are finished within the sequence, it will stop on the last rotation. When the switch is turned to off, it will go backwards through the sequence until it reaches its initial rotation. Well guys, that finishes up this tutorial. Hopefully I've given you more insight on Scrap Mechanic. If you'd like to see more from this game, check out my other playlist. Also, don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed what you saw today. And if you'd like to keep up with upcoming tutorials, make sure to subscribe. As always, thank you so much for watching, and you have a good night.